Have you been saving all of your felted wool upcycled sweater scraps, but you don't know what to do with them? I'm Jan Hal, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you some crazy scrap quilting using upcycled sweater scraps. These scraps of sweaters make the cutest fabric, original, colorful, that you can make so many fun things with. So usually you use the crumb piecing technique for cotton fabrics, but it works really well with these upcycled sweaters. You could actually make up a quilt. Make sure you hang with me through the whole video because at the end I'm going to show you some fun things that you can make with this whimsy colorful fabric. Let's go over the items and things that you'll need. Of course you're going to need your upcycled sweater scraps. Most of these are felted wool sweaters. You want to make sure that you're using, you know, pretty much the same weight. You wouldn't want to use like this thin cashmere sweater because when it's sewn together and you have thicker pieces around it, this is going to be a weaker spot and maybe won't wear as well. So save your cashmere for other things. Grab a variety of colors and just have them in a pile next to your sewing machine. You'll need some fabric, just some cotton fabric strips. You can use muslin. This is just an upcycled sheet that I'm using, white cotton fabric, and they're cut in about two inch strips. Just have those, cut a bunch of those out and have them handy by your sewing machine. And a pair of scissors, you'll need a sewing machine. We're going to set our sewing machine to a zigzag stitch. So just a basic sewing machine. We're going to set that to a five width and a two setting for the length. You'll want to use just a universal needle. Size 90 is good. And grab a thread color for your sewing machine that's just neutral. You don't want to sit and change thread colors for every little seam you do because you're going to be joining two different colors anyway. So I like to use like a tan or a gray color thread. So let's get right to how we're going to piece these things together. There's not really any wrong or right way to put these together. Use your imagination, be creative, and I'll show you some tips on how to put them together, different shapes and sizes. The reason we use these fabric strips is you want to stabilize the seam somewhat so they're not going to stretch out or pull apart. It, get, it just stabilizes it a lot better. And instead of having the, the whole backing be covered with a backing, if you're making like slippers or mittens or something that you still want a little bit of give in the fabric, if, you, if it were backed the whole thing with the white fabric, it wouldn't have the same stretch. It would just limit the movement of the fabric. So we're going to, as you can see here, use just little strips and I'll show you how to, it looks complicated, but it's really not, it's really easy to do. And that will help stabilize your final fabric piece. If you haven't watched my tutorial on how to felt sweaters and all the other tips that go along with that, make sure you watch that. I'll put the link in the description below. One of the first things that we'll do is just take your pieces. This is a, a sleeve and I'm going to just open that up so I can have better access. I'm cutting down the seam of the sleeve. So if you have bigger pieces like this that you're going to use, a color that you want to use, just cut out some sections about this big and then we'll most likely be cutting them down but at least you have that color option available and like this piece right here I would want to get rid of that bottom cuff you could use it I guess if you want it really wanted to but I'll get rid of that and that bulky seam you don't want to include that so get rid of that and the rest of these look pretty good and we'll just work with work with that. Just choose a piece. I'm going to get rid of that point there. 
and that little piece of a seam there. And pick another color that you want to join next to this. Uh, choose this brown. Now, as with all my upcycled sweater projects, don't be afraid to, like this is the wrong side of the sweater and this is the right side. Both have a different look. So you can use the wrong side as the right side. It just depends on what look you want. The edges, if we're, if I'm sewing it to this straight edge, I want this piece to be a straight edge too. So I will even that up just a little bit and I'll get rid of that collar. See how that's bowing a little bit right there? You don't want that. Or maybe it's the purple that's bowing. So I want to straighten that out. You could use a rotary cutter if you really wanted to, but not all of the seams are going to be straight seams. I'll take it to the sewing machine, place my strip of fabric down. Now it doesn't matter where it is on the strip of fabric, just so that it's the seam you're going to have, because we're going to be cutting the excess away anyway. So I want to make sure that I have enough at the top and I'll butt the edges up together. If we were to sew like you would a normal scrappy quilt, like sew the right sides together and then sew the seam and then open it up and press, these seams would be much too bulky. So the beauty of sewing felt and upcycled sweater pieces together is that you can just butt the edges up together, zigzag with some stabilizer on the back and you'll have a nice seam. So we'll take that to the sewing machine and backstitch at the beginning at the end. I'm going to stop my seam right there and then I'll decide what to do next. I'll probably just cut that off here or maybe even cut it at an angle. You want to align your presser foot so it's in the center so it's equally zigzagging on both sides of that crevice there. Backstitch at the beginning. Make sure that the edges are butt up against each other as you sew. Flip it over and trim away the excess fabric and you do that by just pulling it up and make sure you're not cutting into the sweater fabric. So now I just get to decide what to do with it next. I think I'll trim this off. And maybe so something on the diagonal over here. So this little cuff right here is pretty flat and it's not real bulky. So I'm going to go ahead and incorporate that. It will give it some character as well. So I'll just butt those up and go with that for now. Now, to make sure you're not getting that nesting there, and I forgot to grab my threads, and it's not real crucial because this is on the back side of a, of a item and you're not going to see that, but so to avoid that nesting underneath, just hold your thread for the first couple stitches. and trim that down. Let me show you how to piece like a curve. So I'm going to cut a little bit of a curve there. And if I were to say take, let's see, this gray piece and I wanted to sew that there. If I wanted it to extend out clear to the top, first I'll want to add something to this piece because if I sew this up, 
sewing that's going to be a little bit more complicated. So I will, so all you do is overlap it just a little bit, lay it on top, and then I'm going to cut that, use that top piece as a pattern. So as you, now you can see that I have that, the correct curve. Now let's add something up here. So let's see, let's square that off a little bit or straighten that up a bit. Let's add a little bit of orange up at the top there. So you can see that this is a little bit of an angle at the top. So I'll need to get that angle on this piece. So I'll overlap that a bit. That out and then cut use this top piece as a pattern to get that angle so let's just piece these two pieces together first take your strip to add it to the green and the brown piece. And it doesn't really matter where you place the strip as long as it is underneath where, where you are sewing. Now as you can see I kind of went off more onto the gray. No worries. Just lift up your presser foot, go back, and begin sewing again. Again, I'm going to back stitch. And don't worry if it, it's a, a little wavy because when we're, we're finished we're just going to take a hot iron and press that down and it'll flatten that out and then we can cut out whatever we want with our piece. So depending on how big your item is or like I say you could make quilt blocks out of this. Just cut, you know, sew a bunch together, get your quilt block, cut it out and then sew the quilt box together. You'll just continue adding pieces until you have a piece of fabric big enough for your pattern, whatever you're making. Now that I have two pieces big enough, I'm going to just take it to the iron and give it a good pressing just to flatten out those seams just a little bit. That flattens it out really nicely. Oh, I can't stand it. This is so cute. Look at all the fun patterns and it's kind of like artwork. You just never know what you're going to come up with. Cut different color combinations and oh, the fun things you can make with this stuff. Now I'm going to make a pair of cute upcycled sweater mittens from these pieces. The front piece will be these cute scraps. So whatever pattern or whatever you're making, take the pattern and just lay it out how you want. You kind of move it around and kind of decide what part of the fabric you want to include. I want to include that orange. I really like that. So just pin it in place and cut it out. If you haven't seen my tutorial on how to make these upcycled sweater mittens, you'll have to check it out. It really is a simple project and they are so fun to make up. They make great gifts. Winter's coming. This is a really fun project to use your upcycled sweaters. So check that out. You can also make a cute Christmas stocking, patchwork Christmas stocking, a bag or a purse, cosmetic bag, 
there's so many fun things that you can make. Be sure to go to my website where I have a lot of these patterns listed where you can download and print them. So I'd like to know in the comments below what you would like to, what can you visualize making something with this fabric? I think they turned out pretty cute. So many other fun things that you can use this scrappy fabric using your upcycled sweater pieces. Keep on saving those scraps. Don't let anything go to waste. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that. And did you know that you can click on that little bell next to the subscribe button and you can be notified whenever I put something new up. Have a wonderful day, have fun sewing, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.